Want to know what things you have to book way early on Disney Cruise Line? And also, did you realize you don't have to book your port excursions through Disney? We've got all the details for you here in part one of our Disney Cruise Line video on DFB Guide. Let's win Disney Cruise. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're cruising with Disney Cruise Line and we have got a ton of really, really good tips that you need to know before you cruise. And also, even if you have cruised, even if you're a Platinum Cruise member, we've got a few things you might not have known. So let's get started. Number one, let's talk about how to start vacationing even earlier than normal. So there's nothing worse than starting your vacation with stress. Who wants to wait in line to get started relaxing? That's why you'll want to schedule the embarkation or your arrival time for your cruise as early as you possibly can, because those lines to check in can get really, really long and you want to take advantage of all the great amenities from the get go. You want to get on the ship as soon as you can. Check in will usually begin around 11 a.m. with people actually getting to board the ship around noon. Now there's going to be a lot of people there to get on early. So if you're looking to avoid crowds, arrive at 1230 for check-in. That seems to be the sweet spot between the early birds and all of the buses arriving from Disney World, assuming you're leaving from Port Canaveral. You'll be able to select your embarkation time when you do online check-in, which you will do before you get to the port. That's all taken care of before you leave. If you're a Platinum Disney Cruise Line member or you're staying in a concierge level room, you're automatically given the first embarkation group. But if you're silver, gold, or a first time cruiser, you will be able to choose a later embarkation time based on your status. So you'll just want to choose the earliest one you can so you can get on the ship, get your lunch, get settled in your room, and even maybe go get a dip in the pool before the ship even sails. Now, remember, if you're staying at Disney World before the cruise and have transportation as part of your package, you're pretty much going to be assigned whatever time the bus gets you to the terminal. So don't worry about that if that's you. Now, your room likely won't be ready if you board the ship right at noon. It'll probably be ready closer to 1.30. So head to lunch or the pool if you pack swimsuits in your carry-on bag. And don't forget to take advantage of luggage forwarding. Disney will send luggage tags and all the info ahead of your cruise. Just attach those tags and Disney takes care of the rest, bringing your luggage directly to your stateroom by 6 p.m. Next thing to know about cruising, lots of extras sell out before you even get on board. So these are things like meet and greets, specialty dining, and even port adventures. So pre-book your special meet and greets and advanced dining reservations for character dining before your cruise. Super important because they do book up. Currently, you can reserve these experiences ahead of time. Princess gatherings, frozen meet and greet, Disney Junior character breakfast, this is only on select cruises, Disney VIP character breakfast, again select cruises and royal court tea also select cruises first time cruisers can reserve 75 days out while returning cruisers get to book earlier than that so are you starting to see the whole thing here like people who have cruised multiple times before get to do everything a little bit earlier than everybody else so if you haven't cruised before you kind of get the leftovers but that i guess incentivizes you to cruise more with disney so that you can up your status level and start booking earlier something else that sells out quickly is adults only dining so remy on the fantasy and dream and palo on all of the ships these are the two adults-only dining experiences. If you have been on a Disney cruise before, you can book earlier, just like those character experiences. They do keep a few reservations available for the first day of the cruise, but be sure to get there early because once they're gone, they're gone. So if you don't actually get a chance to book that adult dining before your cruise, you can go up to Remy and Palo on embarkation day and ask if they have any availability and they do save some availability for that embarkation day. So there is still hope. Now you want to book Palo brunch ASAP. If you're interested in this, it should definitely be one of your top priorities because it sells out very quickly. You'll also want to book spa packages ahead of time if you're interested. You can wait until the first day of the cruise to book, but heads up a lot of people will be touring the spa on the first day and maybe you don't want to schedule a massage then if you're looking to relax. Now, here's a little bit more about the spa and the rainforest room. You can get day passes or longer passes for the rainforest, which is the co-ed spa area on each ship that features hot tubs, saunas, steam rooms, and scented showers. A rainforest day pass you can get any time, so don't worry about pre-booking that. But if there are spa treatments that you want, you can pre-book those. Don't forget to wear a bathing suit in the rainforest area because it's co-ed and bring those shower shoes. There are decent and large showers here, and the, I'm not talking about the 
scented showers. I'm talking about like the showers at the gym next door. So if your family is annoying you and taking up the shower too much in your stateroom, head up to the spa and shower there. That's a little tip that Erin Foster gave me and she's super smart about this stuff. And also note that the spa massages and services are basically a giant advertisement for products. So be prepared to be sold to while you're there, like in your massage. <laughs> <laughs> and be ready to let them know you're not interested in purchasing anything unless you find the sales pitches particularly appealing. Okay, something else you need to book early, Small World Nursery. So the kids clubs on the ships are included in the price of your cruise. Kiddos can be signed in and out pretty much whenever you'd like, but if you have little ones under the age of three, they're too little for those kids clubs and they have to go to the nursery if you want some adults only time. So the nursery does need to be booked ahead of your cruise and it does have an hourly rate. So you have to pay extra for the nursery and you have to book it ahead of time on your cruise. So be sure moms and dads of little, little little ones that you're booking that nursery time way ahead of the game because of course that does book up you know for dinner times because moms and dads like to leave the kid in the nursery and go to the adults only dinner locations so book that ahead of time now there are a few things that can't be booked ahead of time like mixology and cooking classes but if you're interested in those you'll want to swing by guest services early on the first day on embarkation day because they have limited capacity and they will book up so you can learn about cocktails and make your own drinks there's a really good mojito class and and a good margarita class. These are an extra fee, but they're fun extra activity to add to your vacation. And then there's the Be Our Chef experience at Palo. This is only available on the Disney Fantasy. It's an exclusive port side cooking class that takes place at Palo. You actually get to make three dishes in the kitchen, so backstage, so you're in the kitchen of Palo. It's really cool. You work with the Palo chefs and then you have lunch where you get to eat all the good stuff. So prior to sailing, the event will be offered initially to concierge guests only, but if the event is not fully booked, any remaining openings will be available to all guests. So this is capped at only eight people and takes place just once on each cruise. So this is when you really want to plan ahead for if you're interested and make sure you kind of book as soon as possible or call Disney Cruise Line and see if there's any availability. Okay, something else you have to book early. Cabanas on Castaway Key. There's a lot of things you can rent or reserve on Castaway Key, but if you're looking forward to relaxing in one of those cabanas, be sure to book that well before you board the ship. There's a limited number of cabanas. They're a pretty hot commodity. Again, if you've cruised with Disney before, if you're a platinum member, if you're a concierge guest, you'll have earlier access to those cabanas. And as with most Disney reservations, don't be totally discouraged if all the cabanas are booked because there can be last minute cancellations. It never hurts to keep checking. So, so much stuff sells out the first day. You'll have to be prepared, whether that's booking things ahead of time or being ready to go on the first day and heading right back to guest services or the restaurants you're looking to dine at. Since there's so much to do and plan for your cruises, you might want to look into booking with a Disney travel agent. As always, we love and recommend Small World Vacations. They can help you narrow down which cruise is right for you. They know everything about the things you need to book ahead of time and book early, even those hidden secret things. And they've got the inside scoop on any special deals so they would be able to get you a better price than if you were booking on your own, potentially. Okay, next thing you need to know, how to communicate with your family while you're on board and check the dinner menu too. So each day you'll be given a paper itinerary called a navigator that outlines all of the activities available on the ship that day and all the times of those activities. But you can also get all of that info on your smartphone if you download the Disney Cruise Line app. You don't have to purchase Wi-Fi in order to use the app aboard the ship. You just use the ship's free Wi-Fi service. But note that app's the only thing you'll be able to use if you haven't purchased the Wi-Fi package or if you're not using your roaming on your phone. You can also send messages to other people in your travel party through the app, so you can send little direct messages or text messages to them. And that, I think, has been a real benefit on the past few cruises I've been on versus the first cruises I went on where all we had were those wave phones. Now, Disney does have two wave, what they call wave phones in their staterooms that you can use around the ship and on Castaway key, but they have to be charged each night and they're kind of bulky to carry around. So I really do prefer using the app on my phone. Now, something else you can do on the app is you can see which characters are meeting when, and you can favorite things so that you can basically create your own schedule of your favorites for the day and receive a notification when that activity is about to begin. So if your favorite character, Goofy, is going to be meeting in the atrium at this particular time, you can favorite that and then get that notification when that's about to happen. So be aware that you likely won't have cell service on the ship. This is true of any cruise line. Occasionally you'll find some spotty service, but be sure to keep an eye on international charges because once you leave the port, you're in international waters and those charges can stack up quickly. Call your service
service provider ahead of time. See if they have a cruise line package, see if they have an international package or something like that, that you can add onto your phone short term so that you can actually use the phone to call people without it costing an arm and a leg. I personally love the international plan from AT&T, which is my cell provider, because they have a system where it only costs you $10 a day if you are out of the country to use your phone the way you would normally use it. So even when I was in Japan, I was able to use my phone, post to social media, call people, text people, and it only cost $10 extra a day for me to do that. So that was awesome. Same thing when I was in Canada on a cruise, same thing when I was in the Bahamas on a cruise, it worked really well. Something else you need to know before you cruise with Disney, you can order everything at dinner. And when I mean everything, when I say everything, I mean everything. So that menu, when you sit down, take that as a guideline, not as a clear cut. You must order one app, one entree, one dessert. Things are pretty much unlimited on the cruise ship. You've already paid for all the food ahead of time, so go ahead and order whatever you want. That means if you want to order five orders of escargot, like my friends at the Diz Unplugged like to do, then you can order five orders of escargot when you sit down. So you can basically order whatever you want. And don't forget that those restaurants are open for breakfast and lunch too. You don't have to just go to the buffet during breakfast or lunch. You can go and have a nice sit down meal while the restaurants out aren't very crowded, but be sure to check your navigator to see which ones are open which days. All right, this is an important thing for you guys to note. I'm sure you already know this. Disney cruises cost more than other cruises. <laughs> so Disney cruise is gonna cost you more than just about any other cruise line out there except for the super, super luxury ones. So the truth is pricing isn't really comparable between Disney and other cruise lines because the experience is very different. So if you kind of think of it like buying a ticket for Six Flags versus Magic Kingdom, both are theme parks, but Magic Kingdom has shows, characters, extra pixie dust, and makes it really different. That said, there are several other cruise lines that are fantastic, awesome experiences and cost half the price. So if that's your bag man, go for it. But if adding Disney to the experience, meaning Disney characters, Disney shows, and an exceptionally kid themed situation, along with the, probably the best kids clubs in the cruise space, then you might wanna look more into Disney. So there are some other things that come standard on a Disney cruise that cost extra on other cruises. And this is something else to work into your budget when you're thinking about taking a different cruise line versus Disney. So the kids youth clubs, the Oceaneers Club and the Oceaneers Lab are included in your cruise price. They're incredibly cool. They are very long hours. Like you can basically not see your kid all day if that's your goal. And they're super interactive and awesome. So kids youth clubs is a big reason why people say I'd rather cruise Disney. Soda pop is free at the soda pop machines by the pools. Most other cruises require you to purchase a soda package, but on Disney Cruise Line, you can have as much water, juice and soda as you would like. So be sure to pack up a refillable bottle or two to fill up with water, things like that. There's not too many soda pop fountains, so fill up when you can. Bottled water is also very expensive on the ship, so be sure to fill up your refillable bottles or bring your own bottled water when you board the ship, as long as it's sealed in original packaging and brought on with your carry-on luggage. Now, like other Disney cruises, there's a lot of selling going on. The spa sells you things. There are lots of events around the shopping options in the ports. Bingo is a big thing that costs cruisers a lot of money. So be aware that Disney isn't exempt from that and avoid those activities if you don't want to be tempted to spend more. There's also a few things you might find on non-Disney cruises that you can expect to see here as well. The unlimited frozen yogurt. There's a few self-serve frozen yogurt and soft serve ice cream um, locations that are free and unlimited. And it's also worth noting that passengers over 21 years of age are allowed to bring two bottles of wine each, which can cut some costs if you're planning on having wine with dinner. This is pretty common cruise practice, although amounts do vary between the cruise lines. If you don't want to worry about bringing anything on board, Disney does offer wine packages that you can pair with your meals. Plus you can purchase things like bottled water and extra soda pop and have them delivered to your room. Okay, next thing to know, don't play outlet roulette. So if you travel with lots and lots of things that need to be plugged in, I've got bad news for you. There's just not enough outlets in the staterooms and you can't bring your own power strips. Contraband, not allowed. <laughs> it's so funny, even I've heard stories about people like literally burying power strips in their luggage and they don't get through, like they find them. So prepare for that. Disney Cruise Line does offer power strips on the ship, but they're very limited and first come first serve. So if you have to have a power strip, get to guest services as soon as you get on board. Now, here's a way that I've figured out to get around it. If you have a lot of USB charged devices, which many of us have, the things like your iPad and your phone and your camera and things like that, that charge via USB, bring a USB splitter so that you can plug that into one outlet and charge multiple things. Sometimes 
sometimes I even plug my computer in to charge and then plug a USB splitter into the computer and charge my phone and iPad through the computer while it's charging. <laughs> Again, it sounds like a maze, but hey, sometimes you gotta be resourceful when you're in a stateroom without a lot of outlets. And last one for this first episode of our two-part things you need to know before you cruise with Disney, you don't have to book shore excursions through Disney. A lot of people don't realize this. For those shore excursions, if you book directly through Disney Cruise Line, you can be sure that A, you won't get left behind, plus the activities will be attached to your reservation, making it a lot easier to make last minute changes if you need to. However, it's worth noting that shore excursions are typically led by a third party company, and you can usually book the same experience or even other experiences in that port on your own, which can save you a lot of money. Keep in mind that you shouldn't book a tour that will get you back to the ship any less than two hours before departure, because your tour could run late, those cruise ships take off. If you're not part of a Disney shore excursion, they will leave you there. They will leave. <laughs> the cruise ship will take off in time and leave you there in the port. So get yourself back in plenty of time to make it back onto the ship and through security. Now, if you do book a tour yourself, or even if you're just exploring on your own, be sure to keep important numbers, like a way of contacting the ship, just in case you run into any trouble or you're running late, close by. Any port besides Castaway Key will likely not have food included, unless it's part of a tour you've booked, so keep that in mind and bring some money to purchase lunch or plan to eat when you get back on the ship. And you can also order room service, which is basically free besides the tip, before you get off the ship for the day and pack it up to take with you. If your cruise includes a stop at Castaway Key, you can pretty much hop off the ship and just relax. They provide beach towels and chairs, but don't forget the sunscreen. And if you want your pick of chairs, you want to get off the ship and onto beach early. There's plenty of stuff for rent as well, most of which is available day of, like rafts and snorkel gear and bikes, and there's lots and lots of activities going on on Castaway Key. You realistically can't get to all of them in one day, so you'll want to plan ahead for the activities you're really interested in. There's also the Castaway Key 5K. You'll have to get up really early, but the metal is nice, and then you're up and about and ready to go to the beach before anyone else. The one thing you want to book ahead of time if you're interested are those cabanas, because they will book up really fast. Now, if you're traveling without kiddos or they're hanging out at the kids' club for the day, you can take advantage of the adults only area on Castaway Key, which is called Serenity Bay. When it's time for lunch, be aware that the food is the same everywhere on Castaway Key, except the adults area, which has some steaks and a few other items. Now we have a whole video all about Castaway Key, so be sure to go check that out. We've got lots of details over there. Okay, so that's it for this first part of our things you need to know before you cruise with Disney Cruise Line. And we will have part two for you very, very soon. So stay tuned. In the meantime, let us know in the comments your favorite tips about cruising. It really, really helps our other viewers to see what you guys have to say about your experiences. So let us know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and tap that notification bell so that you know when we put out another Disney video. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon with part two of the Cruise Line video.